Our next speaker is Joel Gaiman, who is Assistant Professor of Strategic Management and Organization in the Alberta School of Business. His talk today draws from his Insight Grant project and is titled, Going Concerns, a Perspective from the Nexus of Business, Culture and Institutions. Joel. All right, well, good afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be here. I want to thank the uh, Office of the Vice President of Research, as well as uh, Canada's uh, Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council. Um, I've been at the uh, Alberta School of Business now for a little over three years, and as a researcher, my training and expertise are in an area called organization theory. And I, I mix organization theory together with uh, what we know about strategic management and science and technology studies, and in particular, I'm interested in what I call the organization of concerns. If you open any newspaper online or in the real world, you'll find yourself with one concern or another. And I conceptualize these as what I call cultural concerns, because what concerns people in one time or place may be different than what concerns people in another time and place. And so for me, these concerns are culturally located. And I'm particularly interested in concerns that relate to sustainability and values, as these are potent ways of understanding organizations and their impacts. Oh, why not? Sorry, probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, for organizations, especially businesses, the rapid emergence and escalation of cultural concerns can pose significant strategic and technological challenges. For their part, or, uh, governments also may be pressed to adapt and to respond to uh, different cultural concerns, whether through policy or regulatory changes. And as you can see depicted in this uh, simple visual, these uh, different concerns can well interact and cascade back and forth. So today I'm going to tell you briefly about one of my uh, shirk funded projects that's related to unconventional shale gas development. So uh, this project uh, started uh, really as, as a doctoral student. I became interested in what was going on around me. I did my PhD in Pennsylvania at Penn State University. And uh, as some of you may know, there's a large geologic formation called the Marcellus Shale that underlies Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, and West Virginia. And in the past 10 years alone, uh, 16,000 wells have been drilled or completed in Pennsylvania. And typically, companies have more well locations that they could develop than they have the capital and human resources to develop. So for example, a company might have, say, 100 well sites, but only the capacity to develop 20 of them this year. So that got me thinking, how do oil and gas companies decide which wells to drill first, especially considering the contention around this activity? And so I started by collecting data from Pennsylvania's oil and gas regulator, uh, analogous to here in our province, the Alberta Energy Regulator. And I, I have data on where these wells are located. I can plot them on a map, you know, so their latitude and longitude, when they're drilled, if at all, who owns them, et cetera. And if you do plot them on the map, one thing that jumps out to you is that these wells are not randomly located. Some places on the Marcellus Shale have lots of wells. Other places have few or maybe none at all. Now, it turns out that answering this simple question, which wells you know, do you drill first, uh, has turned out to be far more complex and time consuming than I ever imagined. Uh, as any of you who do research uh, can appreciate, perhaps that's uh, par for the course. And in fact, I and my colleagues are still working on answering what we thought was this simple question. But before even be beginning to answer it, I had to become an expert on Pennsylvania's oil and gas data. And this was no small feat. And having done so, I realized these data might be of interest to others, researchers and the public at large. And so I hired a few student interns to see if we couldn't create a Wikipedia-style website, one dedicated to providing free and open access to this information on oil and gas wells. Initially, we managed to build a site with data on 250,000 wells drilled in Pennsylvania since the time of the Drake well in 1859. And we gave every well, every oil and gas operator, and every town and county with oil and gas activity in it a page. We populated those pages with maps, the wells, and any data that we had from the oil and gas regulator. And just like Wikipedia, visitors can add their own content about what might be happening in their town or at a well near them. The site has been live for about 18 months now, and in that time, the site has had about 20,000 visitors. And we've also expanded the information that's available to include three Canadian provinces and a total of seven U.S. states uh, for a little over two million wells. Uh, by my estimate, this is about half of all the wells drilled in North America since the time of the Drake well in 1859. So, so why does research such as this matter? 
Some 50 years ago, the Italian sociologist Poggi gave what I think is a very succinct answer to this question. A way of seeing is a way of not seeing. How one views the world is at once illuminating and blinding. The limits to our own ways of seeing are limits to our ways of living. If we want to make the world a better place, whether in our own small corner or on, in some bigger stage, it may very well depend on new ways of seeing. And this is the goal for my work, whether in a classroom or in a research paper or in a public talk as this one, to cultivate new ways of seeing our common world. And so to borrow a, a line from today's theme, thank you for having an open mind. <laughs>